Andrea, but I should first say thank you for organizing and thank you uh, for allowing us to talk a little bit about the family. I am actually a representative of the second generation more than the owner myself. We own this alongside my brother and, uh, and the family uh, as part of several small businesses that we operate in Nicaragua uh, that were founded by my dad and my mom as um, development workers. They came in the 70s to uh, develop innovative agriculture and uh, tree farming and a bit of coffee uh, and always uh, looking at how to innovate. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the coffee varieties developed by the family is called La Marseillesa, a little bit revolutionary like La Marseillaise in those days. And uh, when you ask the question about how we measure uh, or how we do social impact, one of the items I wanted to share, even though it seems a little bit like, like too much, but you know, in hospitality, you are used to doing guest satisfaction surveys. So what we have come to use in our family businesses across the different companies is like a community, like a guest satisfaction survey, but at the community level and at the staff level. So every so often we implement um, a, a survey with asking, uh, it's about 80 indicators that come out of it on three dimensions, the basic human needs, foundations of well-being, and opportunity. And we ask our staff, we ask some of the community members of cross companies, some of these key questions on access to knowledge, nutrition, water, sanitation, shelter, and uh, sort of taking the temperature of the community, of the employees, what is in their minds in a very structured way. And we come up with uh, metrics that are, we are allowed to act upon. Um, uh, next slide, Andrea. The, it's Thank something you. you will not imagine from the hotel. And I love that slide, but actually, uh, I don't think many people know that, huh? what you Yes, really hotels can have a lot of metrics. And these days, you know, certifications are very common. But across businesses with different industries, we had to take a bit of a different approach because there are certifications for hotels, there are certifications for agriculture. But this looks more at the community level. and and the social progress and the environmental side, the human side. This was developed by the Harvard Business School and MIT in collaboration um, with several social scientists. And in the region, it's incubated by INCAE, which is a local business school, very active in Central America that we, we partner with. And sometimes uh, the results can be a little bit intimidating because you get a lot of data. And, and I'll show you on the next slide, for example, you know, these are the group of small and medium companies that we operate. And the companies that are located in Managua, like Expasa, which is a coffee exporting company, come up with a high ranking because they're in the, they're in the capital. Access to water is very easy. Access to sanitation, uh, communication, education come out high. So a company like Expasa comes up with an average way above the country level, which is 63. Morgan's Rock, despite being in a, rural in environment where there's obviously less communication, less access to education, less access to opportunity, comes up with a ranking that's above uh, the country oh. average. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other companies which are more rural uh, that operate in poor environments have other issues, like some of the cocoa farms we operate in agroforestry in some of the very poor areas in the country. So hopefully by having these metrics, you know, it's intimidating because some of them are low and Nicaragua is a poor country. But as we have the results come up for the, this is the 2017 survey. Now we're just finished 1200 surveys for the 2020 numbers. Mm -hmm. And we can look at how, you know, some of the uh, components improved, some deteriorated. Mm -hmm. Some are a little bit of our hands because for example, uh, some talk about personal freedom or, uh, uh, you know, security and some of those things are a little bit out of the hand. So we have to look at the data granular to be able to act upon. And I don't want to bore you, but if anyone is interested, you know, you know more, feel free to yeah. reach. Yeah. <laughs> when you ask the question. <laughs> you have this ranking of the level of satisfaction of the local community. And of course you still have the level of satisfaction of your guests, but uh, this is a step yes. forward that I'm glad today we are showing everyone because usually Morgan Rock 
is just a beautiful little natural reserve. So uh, I'm very happy that you were able to share that with us. Anna. Thank you. And now we Thank have uh, Andrea Prado, uh, the resident manager that's gonna show us a beautiful place. Hello everybody, probably with some of you, we have exchanged a few emails or calls, or we have been able to take good care of your clients. But just to put you a little bit in context, Morgan Stroke is located in Nicaragua, in Central America. And I get this question all the time, where do our clients have to fly? We have two options. They can either fly to Managua Airport, which is like around two hours and a half to three hours, depending on traffic. But we are also conveniently close to Liberia Airport in Costa Rica. It's actually almost the same distance. Main difference will be the time that you take to cross the border. So it's definitely a great fit. So your client can fly to Liberia, they have more direct flights, or they can either fly to Managua. We handle transfers either way. It will depend on how it works best for your clients. Mm -hmm. And Andrea, well, guess, sorry. it yeah. was a good, good map to show because this morning somebody was asking me what to do. It was a good map to show how close you are from the Nicaragua Lake. And there is a lot of things to do in Granada and San Juan del Sur. So you have a lot of lovely things, uh, activities outside of the hotel. Huh? Definitely. And especially when you're going, like when you're coming from the airport to the property, you pass by Granada, you can see a little bit of it, which is a colonial city. Yep. So even though the trip can be two hours and a half, it's always fun. It's always nice to see a little bit more of how Nicaragua works on a daily basis with all uh, its people. Mm -hmm. And Morgan Rock is not just a hotel. As Mr. Ponson well said, we're a big concept and we're also a 4,000 acres property. So it's a huge thing. And from oh. this whole area, we also have a private protected reserve. Mm -hmm. We have different type of monkeys. We have a variety of birds. So definitely you're getting, uh, and you're immersed into nature. Mm -hmm. So you can build memorable things with your families, with your couples, but we're not just nature. We also have a half mile long pristine private beach. So you can have the jungle and the beach at the same time. And the river. And, and, the, and river. the river. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, if you wanna be immersed into the jungle, you will be. If you wanna get a swim into the ocean, you will have it. If you wanna go kayaking, it's also something you can do. Yep, and everybody can tell uh, it's beautiful swimmable beach. So that's really spectacular. No? The, definitely. The the room, per, the room per hectare, you know, you have almost 100 hectares per room. So in oh. times of COVID, that may be a good indicator to show there's plenty of room for everybody. Exactly. Definitely. Like social distancing, yeah? <laughs> and yeah, it's super hilarious because when we have the, the hotel at its full capacity, the clients always ask, where are these other people? Where are they? And <laughs> since we have many activities, yeah. um, the pure property is huge, you barely see each other. <laughs> Yeah. And this is a little bit of uh, different spots of the property. Uh, we also are very conscious about what do we serve in our restaurant. So we have our own organic farming. Um, and I always get this question again, what's the menu? Can you show us the menu? And I'm like, I can send you a sample menu. However, it really depends on where the chef goes to organic farm and what do we have in terms of vegetables what do the captain catches at the ocean? What do he brings? And menu changes every day. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is fresh, it's organic, and it comes from our farm. And we also buy to the local community, which is very important. Uh, San Juan del Sur, which is the town where we're located. Uh, the 99% of the people, they live from tourism or from local production. So it's very important for us to be able to, to help them as well. Uh, Andrea, on the previous picture, you were showing the turtle. What is the best time to see the, the most turtle? Okay, so the turtle season goes from June to January, let's say. And even though for some people, the rainy season is October and September, that's the best time for the massive uh, arribadas that we have. So it will be from June to January. June to January, huh? a little bit of the fresh shrimp from our shrimp farm, our vegetables and all the delicious food that you can enjoy on property. And then 
in regards to sustainability. I have to say, I have to say Andrea, I mean, because I've been yes. full time and I do not like radish normally, but I'm polite. <laughs> radish were in my plate, so I eat radish and I love your radish. So I think it depends how they grow up and because you can do like radish. And I was really, uh, really nicely surprised of this quality of vegetables and a different taste almost. Huh? No. That's really interesting because clients tell us all the time we feel the difference when we yes. eat this food here and when we eat it yeah. everywhere else and, and it's definitely amazing oh. and it makes you feel better for me. My quality of life has improved in an amazing way eating organic food. Yep, yeah, definitely healthy. Then in regards to sustainability, uh, everything you see on that picture, uh, it was from trees that were planted on property and now again is I said to everybody everything you see and you touch here it was a little plant at the very beginning and now you're able to sit here uh, to have an amazing vacation and everything was built in harmony with the whole concept of the nature itself and it's amazing to see that all this wood is certified that everything was planted once there and now we can be part of it and we can just live it. We also use solar panels to heat the water. Uh, we have a centralized system of great and black water and bio filters. So we tried as much as we can to not impact the private reserve where we are, but to, to be able to to combine in a way to be able to, to, to live with nature that the, the fauna and the flora that we have, that the monkeys, they're not afraid because we are on their habitat. We're living together. Yeah. And this is definitely like an amazing experience, an amazing way to be able to enjoy what the world has given to us. Mm -hmm. Part I of remember. what we wanted, oh, sorry. What did you say? Oh, oh. No, part of what we wanted to to share when we built Morgan's Rock was the Nicaraguan hospitality and how warm and welcoming you know the uh, Nicaraguans are, but also the carpentry. We've received a lot of feedback on the carpentry of the rooms and the wood building. We ship much furniture around the world to Morgan's Rock clients because they fall in love with the wood. And, and that's very much speaks to the carpentry yeah. that we find locally, it's the which best we wanted to showcase. And we have a fabulous company, Simplemente Madera. Huh? Yeah, it's so true. Everybody's so in love with the hanging bed that you will see on the pictures and everybody wants to take it with them. So yes, we had a little more huh, information on the turtle. I knew it was coming, but I, I saw the question before, so I asked you. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so... and. This is another thing everybody asks me, when is the best time to go to the property? And I'm like, all year round, I'm there all year round and it's always my favorite time of the year to go. It will really depend on how or what are your clients really looking for? Because for example, our summer goes from November to April. So it will be those days and you will definitely have fun, fun, fun in the sun, as we will said full sunscreen, you can have a glass of wine, enjoy a beer, go surfing, and you will have sun the full day to do activities. Then the green season to me is one of my favorites because you get to have the sun, you will be with a really nice um, pink color at the end of your vacation, but also everything is super lush and green. So everything looks amazing because you can go to the uh, beach and enjoy like a full day of beach. But then at night, the temperature, because of all the trees and everything, it's just really nice. It makes you feel, it makes you even sleep even better. And then from September, September and October, everybody's like, is it gonna be, it's gonna be raining the whole time. We won't be able to do activities. And I'm like, no. September and October are indeed the, mo the months with the most amount of heavy rain, let's say. But at the property, it works like this. It can rain the whole night, which is amazing because you can have a really nice sleep or it can rain in the morning, but then the whole day you still have sun and you can still do horseback riding. You can still do uh, breakfast at the farm. It doesn't, it doesn't take you away 
the Morgan Strong experience. And also is the best time of the year to see the massive turtles arrival. We can even have three or four turtles lay next on, in one night. We did a lot of effort in the architecture side and the design so that there is cross ventilation year round so that you feel really at ease in the bungalows. And, you know, the, we will get into a little bit the uh, uh, evening breeze, the, which is the cooling for the beds, but really they are really not necessary. Uh, they're accessory and you can feel in the room year round the cross ventilation the overhangs to protect you from the rain while you hear the rain in your room. So the experience is really worth any time of the season. Exactly. And then the whole adventure begins is where you arrive to the property and you have to go to your room and you have to cross our 110 meters long hanging bridge. Oh, we love that. Huh? And I think you, for clients who do not want to walk through the bridge, you have some bungalows which are a little closer, huh? correct? We do. And we also have a golf cart. So if they still want to be on, a, on some bungalows that are in the highest part of the bungalows area, they can still be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we take them in the golf cart and we, we call it the magic trick. Because while the other ones are uh, walking the bridge, they always are taking the car and they always arrive first. <laughs> yeah. Then we have 15 bungalows and three two bedroom villas, a total of 18 units. And as you can see on the picture, all the bungalows or most of it, they are up on a cliff overlooking at the ocean. And now I just wanna show you a little bit map so you get a sense of how are the rooms located so this is the lobby right here, that's the pool. And then the first thing you do, you can either go and stay at the Forest View Bungalows with Plunge Pool, that as you can see, they are pretty close to the main area. If you have like elderly clients or families with small children, this is really helpful because they can be close to the ocean and close to the restaurant. And then if you keep walking here, the first thing that you will find it's villa number one, which is this one called uh, Z right here. And this villa, it's also super private. It doesn't have any neighbors and it's pretty close to the main area as well. Then you cross the 110 meters long hanging bridge and you have the first area of Ocean View bungalows. These five units are... Of oh, we lost you a little bit, Andrea. All right, I don't know, Eric, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <clears throat> oh, Andrea, you're back. If you're walking a little bit up right here, you'll <laughs> find fine more bungalows a little bit up of the cliff. They have really amazing views. Then two two-bedroom villas, and then on the highest part of the room areas, the ocean view bungalows with plunge food. Mm -hmm. Actually, the beautiful view that you have behind you, Andrea, is from one of the bungalows. It looks fake. So, because it's so beautifully done, it's perfect. And everything on the picture is Morgan Rock. Huh? Everything is private. So it's kind of a exceptional. Andrea is a little frozen right now. So I'm gonna read John. You said Morgan Rock is so ahead in time in, in regards of sustainability. Most hotels are just start working on this because of the pandemic. You should teach this wonderful system to other hotels. Bravo. You're lucky to have this piece of heaven and so close to us. <laughs> yes, that, that slide that Andrea was showing is about 20 hectares and the property is 1800 hectares. Yep. So that gives you a bit of a scale idea. Yep. There's plenty of room to walk and bike and be social distancing. So Andrea, I don't know if your sound is back. I think it's back, I'm back, I'm sorry. No, 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 no worry. That's why we are three and we can speak. <laughs> So these are the three two bedroom villas. Uh, perfect for families that want to be together but want to have their own space and privacy. Each one has What you the see there, oh sorry, just so, what you see there is one bedroom. The other one is hidden to the left. No, it's right the here. bedroom and the living room, just to give an idea of size. Yeah. 
and they're identical size of bedroom, which is easy for uh, uh, friends sharing. It's beautiful. Those are my favorite. And I know they are the latest one. I just wanted to repeat what I was mentioning to you, Eric. You remember when you start building them, I said, oh, why don't we put them on the beach? I said, we, because it's like my hotel now. Huh? So, <laughs> and what you said, what you remember what you said, huh? that remember the beach, you wanted to keep it, you said in a few years. Yeah. To have yes. An unspoiled beach is priceless. Yes, it's a sanctuary. We don't want to touch it. Yeah. You know, even the spa is very lightweight, uh, which is on the beach, but that's about the only structure. And uh, uh, this has the advantage also of having the breeze year round. It's a little bit, it's the view and it's the breeze. Every room has access to the breeze, which is really phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And you have an amazing system for air conditioning, huh? Andrea, Eric? Yes. So that's the one you see right here on this picture. It's called the Evening Breeze Bed. Probably some of you have heard about it. So it's an eco-friendly air conditioning system. And it basically gives you the whole comfort having like the temperature of an air conditioner, but it doesn't take you away, away the whole sensorial experience of hearing the birds, the monkeys, the ocean, mm -hmm. and the breeze itself. Um, but it gives you a nice, a nice temperature because we know some clients are used to have air condition the whole day and they need a, like a really nice temperature in order to sleep. However, how you guys were saying before, uh, the, the rooms, they're all open. So if you see on these pictures, you barely see it, but they're all screens. It's not like 100% open that the monkeys will get into the room, but it gives you... It, it allows you, it allows the air to circulate in the whole room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the monkey, I, I was hoping one monkey will get into my room, but no, they keep a normal distance, huh? even if yeah. you wish, because you know they are really cute, but uh, it's- uh, We once made a few years ago, the front page of the Washington Post travel section, oh. and it was a monkey looking into the room. And the, the journalist said, this was the first time I've been in a hotel that was built to see humans in their rooms. <laughs> so animals could see humans in their rooms. <laughs> really cute, huh? so of course, I see that you were asking if you have tree house. No, this is as close as a tree house that, uh, that they have. Huh? Uh, and the air conditioning, I want to yeah. say, slept, it's working wonderfully. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we have. 10 ocean view bungalows. They're all the same concept, the same design. And they all have um, this design with a whole room, bathroom in the back and a private deck with a hanging bed. So you have your privacy so you can enjoy a glass of wine and watch the sunset. But they can also be able to accommodate up to four people, let's say a couple, and then two small children because this sofa turns into a queen size sofa bed. Mm -hmm. And we can also add a twin bed if needed. So for families with small children that they want to have their children close to them, not having the two bedroom villas, the bungalows work perfectly. And they have easy access to the beach. And it, they have enough space for a family with two small children. And then we also have some rooms, for example, for couples that they are during their anniversary, honeymooners, especially their honeymooners, they love the ocean view bungalows with plunge pool mm -hmm. because they have their own private pool. They can have their own bonding time there and they are still able to enjoy the whole nature and beach experience. As I said before, I have the same concept the rooms are exactly the same and difference will be location. And if they have a pool, they don't have a pool. Another important thing that we love about the property is that if you wanna keep yourself busy, we have more than 20 activities that you can, that you can enjoy on site mm -hmm. from breakfast at the farm that we can see this little uh, boy getting his ex to make his breakfast. Mm -hmm. You can also enjoy our almost 
130 kilometers of hiking trails with the horseback riding. Mm -hmm. And we have a variety of things if you guys wanna enjoy and explore the coastline and go fishing. We have bikes, you can do paddle boarding, you can do bird watching, you can do hiking, you will learn how to make cacao, how to make a tortilla, how to kayak at the estuary. Um, for having a full agenda is not a problem. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. But also there are some clients that they want to be at the property, but they want to see a little bit more of Nicaragua. So we do also offer offsite activities, right? This picture you see right here, it's San Juan del Sur, which is the town that we're close by. It's like around 20 minutes from the property. And it's a small fisherman's town that you can go and explore a little bit and see a little bit more of the Nicaraguan cultural part. Then we also have Granada. We have a full day trip to Granada where you can see the colonial city, you go through the lake and you see the 365 little islands at the lake. Uh, you enjoy like a whole Nicaraguan experience in one day and you can still be at the property for, for a few times. We also have um, zip lining where you go again to San Juan del Sur. So activities is not an issue. Uh, you will also need, for some people they say we need more time. We wanna do all the activities know. and we don't have enough time. Uh, one thing about San Juan del Sur, we also said it's a kind of the capital of surfing, huh? Because you're famous for that in your industry. It is indeed. Hmm? And it's really funny because we are next to Playa Maderas, which is like a surfer's beach. They have interesting waves for people who like to surf. However, our beach, since it's like a bay, it's pretty calm. It's super swimmable. Kids can do paddle, uh, boogie boarding. However, yeah. if you go to a neighbor's beach, it's like a full surfing pitch. Yeah, exactly. So you please every guest, huh? and, but if you have exactly. serious, if uh, you have serious surfers amongst your clients, then definitely it's a good place to go for surfing. Yeah? It is. Then for clients that they don't want to do activities, they want to take a break, they want to disconnect to reconnect, we also have a 4,200 square feet yoga studio. So it's a huge and massive platform. And it's a multi-purpose place, I said. So you can either host a yoga retreat, you can host a wedding, you can host a meditation session. It, it's just right at the beach you mm -hmm. itself around you. And it gives you such a peace of mind that it's just amazing. And you can either use it for like a yoga retreat, as I said before, or even for... For corporate retreats, we have some team buildings also, and they just love it because they can do their meetings and everything, but they still are connecting with nature. Mm -hmm. And it's great because the size of uh, Morgan Rock, you're only 15 bungalows, three two bedroom villa, and then it's great for a buyout. Huh? And you also have a three bedroom uh, on the beach huh, that you can uh, uh, yeah. rent. Huh? So We've hosted place. some fantastic family gatherings, buyouts, oh, yes, uh, yes. unique experiences. Mm -hmm. and, so also, and also for clients that they, they don't want to be doing activities, they just want to pamper, their, pamper themselves, they want to read, they want to practice some yoga. We also have a spa at the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you like a, an amazing way to recharge. Uh, all the clients that have a massage at the beach, they said it's an, uh, an unbelievable experience because they feel like renew. Mm -hmm. And it's, as Mr. Ponceau well said, it's uh, a small structure, but it's just right at the beach when you can have all the sensorial of here in the ocean mm -hmm. and the birds and the monkeys around you. But beyond hospitality we're part of a community and for us that's key because all the staff and everything and all the people that we have there are part of the community so we have a program with the local schools where clients and also us we donate in order uh, for the little children that are normally kids of the staff members to have furniture for the schools 
to have filter water at the school. And we also provide school supplies. So sometimes we get some clients that they want to go to the school and they want to give back to the community. So we, we organize the trips so they can go to the school and meet the kids and be part of supporting a little neighborhood, let's say. Mm -hmm. And with all this COVID situation, um, the community was struggling. Uh, almost everybody that they were working in tourism, oh, they were fishing, they, they didn't have any jobs because if we have no clients, there are no, no tourism because San Juan del Sur uh, basically survived because of tourism. tourism. Yep. So in, in a big effort with our clients, with all the companies and us, we're supporting 103 families for a period of six months because they, they have no jobs right now. So we give them like a package of food and we provide a little relief during this or uncertain times. Oh, no. But soon clients, we have already a lot of bookings coming up. So that's uh, soon gonna be in the past. Huh? Oh, no. Yes, that's why it was only six months. We're truly yeah. believing and we're getting into a different stage and we're ready to rock it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Huh? Oh, no. So do we, uh, John, John was asking if you provide transportation to San Juan del Sur and Granada, huh? so. We do, yeah. um, we do, we provide transportation to any place that your clients wanna go. We operate in our, our own transfers. So we pick them up at the airport, we take them to Granada, they want to go to Matagalpa, if they want to go to Rio San Juan, whatever they want to go, we're more than happy to take them. Mm -hmm. uh, Celine, you were asking if um, Morgan Rock offer student exchange programs or volunteer groups. We can we can check on it. It's some we have volunteers in the past, but during the high season, we, we have a high demand of people, so we can do. And we also partner with some other ONDs that they have programs in San Juan del Sur. So we will partner with them. Mm -hmm. uh, does Nicaragua uh, keep its minority community safe and how many languages are spoken? That's uh, Celine asking this question. Well, in regards to languages, I will say almost everybody speaks English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, um, that will be the most of it. And then in regards to safety was, can you repeat the first part, please? Does Nicaragua keep his minority community safe? I don't know, Celine, if you wanted to, to give us a little more info. Mm -hmm. There's a long story of minority communities along the Atlantic coast, you know, the Miskito mm -hmm. communities, the Sumos, ah, the Mayagnas, and they have suffered over the years a bit from exclusion and remoteness. Mm -hmm. uh, but in general, Nicaragua has been inclusive and, you know, since the revolution also, there's been a lot of worker rights enforcement, the participation of women in leadership positions in the ministry. There are laws in the municipalities where, for example, if the mayor is a, a man, the woman has to be a woman or vice versa. So there's a number of efforts that the government has done to be inclusive. Um, that is not always the case for political inclusiveness. You know, there's a bit of radicalization going on like in many other places around the world. So uh, I wouldn't encourage you to do politics in Nicaragua or anywhere else, as a matter of fact, but in terms of minorities and, and uh, in, uh, safety, uh, it's, it's above care. average, particularly for women, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question of the flight from Canada are not like the one from the US. You have more flight and flight and, uh, and direct correct. Any change in the future on that? I said, you have, you know, if there is going to be more flight uh, from Canada in the future or anything? Well, not that I know right now. Uh, we're hoping to have the airlines back right yep. now. But Liberia, it's, it will be like the best fit, definitely. Yes, huh? and you're only like two hours and a half by car and it's easy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh -huh. 
Uh, does Nicaragua no, I don't know, at this moment did the hurricane Eta damage any area? No, or in your hotels? No, no, fortunately not. No, we're grateful. We just had a lot of rain, uh -huh. but we're kind of used to the rain. Um, but no, we have to say we're grateful again. Uh, to yeah. And then we would like to know which community does uh, the name Nicaragua come from? Do you know? No? If there is, if it comes from an minority name, huh? The Nicarao, the Nicarao tribes. The Nicaragua, Nicaragua tribes. Perfect. Yeah, Nicaragua. That's, that's your answer. <laughs> okay. I think we have one more. Uh, Francoise, you're asking, uh, do you need the COVID test to enter Nicaragua? Is a yes. country open, huh? and the country is open to all nationality. What we have to find is... Uh, the flight, and as Andrea said, the best bet is Liberia, which almost all of you have a direct flight uh, to. Huh? Exactly, and they do need the, the PCR COVID test mm -hmm. uh, made 72 hours prior entering to the country. Yeah, and the last is uh, Cathy. Cathy, you're asking if we're offering any fun trips at this time. So soon we're going to be working on. It would be exactly. great to say to show clients that it is safe to travel. Yes, indeed, and especially that uh, Nicaragua and Morgan World is such a special place. And I hope you have seen all the extens the, this extended Nicaragua Morgan Rock that we usually never see, huh? because uh, we are limited more to the resort, but not to the, uh, the whole experience that uh, Eric and his family have created and, and, the, and the team at the Morgan Rock. Huh? Oh, no. So I don't know if you have any other questions. If not, that's going to be the end of our little webinar. And I would like to thank everyone for joining us today, particularly Eric. Huh? That was wonderful to have you. And I hope <laughs> you will be back again. And you, Andrea, wonderful. as always. Huh? Uh -huh. Thank you for the invitation. And thank you for everyone You're for welcome. listening. Yes. Everyone now is super motivated. Huh? We're going to sell our Morgan Rocks and be even, you know, help the community all in our own ways. Huh? All right. Thank you, everyone. Have Merci. a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.